It's not often that you get to go flying with experimental avionics, but today, that's exactly what we're going to go do. Every night I'm going on the grid, texting back, I want you, hit you up, I'm on the other side, I miss you, miss you. Take you off, I came me way too strong Cannot keep it low-key Got me drugged, your pheromones hit the roof Auto, your taste It's really a bad reception out there Where you heading? Why ain't gravity pulling you in closer to me? My name is Iha Bawad I work as a programmer at Google and in my spare time, I fly. I have a sport pilot license. I fly out of aerodynamic aviation at Reed Hillview Airport. And I also work on airball, which is kind of my job away from my job. I just, you know, it, it takes up a lot of my passion. What is airball? Airball is a project to build a reliable, low cost, easy to use probe that measures all the air data, not just part of it. Then there's the visualization, and so Airball is also a project to popularize this new visualization that we've come up with and build a device such that this new visualization can be made easily available in the cockpit. I believe that the way this will improve safety is by putting awareness of the relative wind into our minds in this very intuitive kinesthetic way. And the challenge really, we're used to going around in two dimensions and the direction we're going is the direction we're going. We don't really think about the relative wind as this other thing we have to bear in mind. And I think we have to change that and to change that we need something very intuitive. One example I always like to give is the albatross. So an albatross actually has pedotubes in its beak. And since it can move its head around, it can use these to sample the airflow. I think, although I'm not an albatross so I cannot be sure, but I think that an albatross really does know all the air data. I believe we need to get this intuition that the albatross has. And the way we can get that is by adding an instrument that taps into our kinesthetic sense and links that to the physics of flight in a very intuitive way. So imagine that you're in a plane. Imagine the relative wind is an arrow that points towards you. Now imagine that you're flying at a high angle of attack. The arrow comes from below. At a low angle of attack, the arrow comes from right in front. Now if you're yawed to the left, the arrow comes from the right. And if you're yawed to the right, the arrow comes to the left. Now, imagine that you're sitting inside the cockpit right here. What would you see? You'd see the arrow as a blue dot that's coming from different directions, and imagine when the wind is stronger that the arrow is closer to you, which means the blue dot is bigger. When it's weaker, the arrow is further away. That is essentially the visualization that Airball gives you. And this is what it looks like in a demo. This is would be cruising. The arrow is sort of in front of you. The arrow is plump because you have a high indicated airspeed and you are coordinated. Now if you slip, now you're slipping to the right and the arrow is coming from the left and vice versa. Now let's say you slow down, your angle of attack increases and the arrow gets smaller because your indicated airspeed is getting smaller. At some point it will get to the bottom, which is your stall line. That's your stall angle of attack. That foundationally is the visualization that we give you. And when we show you this in the airplane, you'll notice there's a magenta circle that will show up around the arrow. That represents your true airspeed. And you can compare your true and indicated airspeed to get an idea of your density altitude. So here we have angle of attack, angle of side slip, indicated airspeed, and true airspeed all together in one instrument that you can glance at. And so you don't have to look around your panel. If this is in a visible place, you can glance at it every once in a while and not lose situational awareness. What I do know is what would help pilots like me. And I know that I, when I'm very stressed and distracted, really want a single thing I can look at that reminds me of what my entire air data state is in one quick glance. Any pilot who would benefit from that would benefit from using Airball. I would really like this to be built into um, 
flight school curricula, either for primary students or for people seeking BFRs, just to get people to think about the relative wind more actively. Really, I think the risk is that we get too complacent and we start driving the airplane. And that's when we are likely to fall into situations without preparation. Because this is an open source project, it is abundantly clear to anyone who looks at our equipment exactly how much it costs to make. So we're not secretive about that. And the cost of all the hardware I've showed you today is somewhere around four to five hundred dollars. Um, that is dominated by some of the pressure sensors we use, which are high precision pressure sensors, and they're about forty dollars, forty or fifty dollars a piece. And that's if somebody wants to build it themselves. That's if someone wants to build it themselves. The question of how much it would cost if it were purchased ready-made depends on what a business would normally charge for their services. Right now, we are looking at two possibilities. The first is exactly what you say, being like a Stratix, and it can be mounted non-permanently without tools to any variety of airplanes and people can use it on their club airplanes and what this does is it gives people the chance to use it on any plane and specifically to use it on the plane they train with. Um, the second focus which is to a large extent the focus of the EAA is what we can do for experimental aircraft where there's a lot more leeway to permanently install material and I would expect we can very easily adapt the airball system to a panel installation for someone who wants it, mostly by just removing components, removing batteries, removing wireless links, and replacing them with wires. And then you just install the display integrated in their panel. In what way they choose, and uh, they're off to the races. I'm going to install the airball probe on this Cessna, and the first thing I'm going to do is install the mounting. There are many, many ways to mount things to airplanes. We have chosen a way that is legal. In other words, it is not permanently installed. It can be removed without tools. And we have decided to standardize on RAM one-inch balls. That's just for testing. We can use GoPro balls or GoPro mounts or just about anything else. And this is a 3D printed mount that we built. It's nice and light, it's cheap, and it's rigid. I'm going to put it about here on the strut. This mount goes on with four bungees for redundancy. One, two, three, and four. All right, and so now we have a ram ball attached to this airplane. It's not gonna go anywhere. This is our probe. Um, the probe has a little ball on the front that has five holes. These are pressure measuring holes. And it's got a static probe. This is actually closed off at the end, which has a little ring of holes to sample the static pressure. Uh, this is an outside air temperature probe right here. This is our antenna for the wireless. And it snaps off of the ram mount. So if you get it aligned on an airplane that you use frequently, you can snap it off and put it back on um, while maintaining the alignment. Um, as you can see, this is just a little 3D printed part that attaches to the tube. We can make any such 3D printed part to attach to any mounting system. It's pretty trivial. So I'm just going to install this here and get it tight. And for now, we're aligning these sorts of sort of manually. Um, eventually, we want to have a somewhat more scientific way of lining it up. The important thing is not so much the proper alignment as it is just consistency. And the reason is we're getting a pretty good measure of the angle of the airstream coming at this probe. And so if it's off by a few degrees and you correct it in the little display so that it's zeroed, it'll stay there. There we go. We have a probe installed. Now there's a little on-off switch on the back. We turn it on and it starts transmitting. And we can turn it off for now to save the battery. The battery in there lasts, oh, I don't know, about 12 hours or so, so we don't really have to worry about preserving the battery too much. That's it. That's the probe. The display is also mounted on a RAM mount, but once again it can mount on anything. It's a little 3D printed part which has an antenna coming out of it and a little push and turn adjustment knob. And this inside of it is a Raspberry Pi, which you might be familiar with from the Stratix family of GPS receivers. So we just mount this anywhere in the cockpit that is out of the way, but easy to see. We're going to power this via a USB cord, and you can use a cigarette lighter adapter with this. We're going to use a little USB power pack today, just because it's easier to use. And so come on with me into the cockpit, and we'll put it on. Well, hello there. So now we're going to install this on the inside of the cockpit. This is just a ram suction mount.
and we're done. Now we're going to put this with the antenna mounted parallel to the antenna on the outside, but really for a Cessna 172 where we have a line of sight to the antenna, it's not that critical. As you can see, this is a standard Raspberry Pi boot screen, and soon enough we'll have the instrument. Now you can see there's a red X, which means that we're not getting any data. I'm going to go and turn on the probe, and you should see the red X disappear, and you should see the status of the wireless connection show up in this little triangle right here. And there we go. We're all set up and ready to go. So now that we know a little bit more information about the Airball probe, let's go ahead and see how it works in the real world. Cessna 733 Bravo Echo, Livermore Tower right, downwind departure approved, runway 25 right, clear for takeoff, traffic, Diamond Star, four mile final. Gusty, gusty. I know. Archer 5, 8 kilo, runway 25 right, clear to land number 2. 5, 8 kilo, clear to land number 2, runway 25 right. Seems like it's probably more thermals than wind, right? Yeah, yeah most likely. Runway 25 left, clear for the option. I think it's gusts coming around Mount Diablo too, because I'm getting pushed left oh, and right. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. We'll just get kind of over that direction, and then we'll start playing around. Okay. If you can get the ball centered for a while. Very just get the, this ball, yeah, not that ball. Right, that ball centered. And just let me know when you're ready. There you go, that's centered. Okay, good. So, interestingly enough, we have... We're not detecting any yaw bias in this. Like, this agrees with that. Okay, cool. So, good installation, then. <laughs> yeah, but well, but the the thing is, sometimes um, as we change flight attitude, we might see a disagreement. Okay. And so we'll see how that works. So would you say that you're at VY right now? Uh, yes. Okay. So, three hotel, so what I'm right cross and departure gonna do right is set your alpha Y wings to be right there. So the wings mark Alpha Y, okay, and the ramps mark Alpha X. So if we want to try Alpha X at some point, we could do that, but we don't have to. Okay. But just so you know, and then the cups are Alpha Ref for like uh, landing approach. Okay. In the cups, it would be right in the middle of the two half of the circles. Two halves, yes. Okay. Right. And that would be a, a, a landing approach, perfect. Right. AOA or whatever. Yep. Okay. And so you can see that now the little magenta line is starting to fade in. Yeah. So it fades in from zero to 100%. I see. At, to, at a certain point, and then eventually it goes to 100% and marks that area and starts growing and growing. Shark Hill approach, Cessna 733 Bravo Echo VFR request. 733 Bravo Echo, go ahead. Next point following uh, to the uh, probably south of Tracy for uh, maneuvers, if possible. Three Bravo Echo Squad five three zero two. Uh, number seven three three Bravo Echo North Town Approach Talk altimeter three zero zero three. Doing local air work at seven thousand. Yes, sir. Uh, doing some local air work at seven thousand. Sure. Yep. And so now it's faded in. Yeah. And so that's your, you know, so you just get an idea of like when you see this ring, what your density altitude is like. Sure. So you see to. this on a landing, and you're like, oh, that's about like when I was at six three hundred feet today. Right. I see, so you can kind of mentally start comparing what your flight characteristics are going to be based on what you have experienced in the past. Exactly. That's pretty cool. And it's all at a glance, like you don't have to look for a number of things, it's all just one thing. Right. You're looking at, you can look out the window where you belong. So now this would be coordinated flight and a climb, I guess. Yep. So now if I level off here at 7,000, My AOA is basically going to start going higher and higher. Well, your AOA is going to get lower. Right, but, but the don't. ball is going to be climbing. Yep. All right, oil pressure, oil temp still looks good. Suction still looks good. All instruments still look good. I'm leaving all the lights on so that people can see me as best they can. And so I can see that I'm coordinated because, number one, that is yep. centered, but also my ball is centered and everything else. I mean... Right. So, ideally, uh, the air ball and your inclinometer ball should be 100% correlated. Right. So, the only reason they're not correlated is when flight conditions change the yaw effect of your airplane. I see. Okay. What are some maneuvers we can do to kind of show this guy off? I would assume a slow flight landing kind of thing would be... Uh, yeah, let me bring it to 150 full scale. Okay. And we have a good ball. And so now, uh, so now, of course, so we can see this was your alpha when you're going at... Um, 
in your climb. Right. Now this is your cruise alpha. I see. So another thing to do is to try a stall. That's another calibration maneuver we can do. Okay. So I'm going to get ready to calibrate your alpha stall. Okay. And then I'll start trying to get into a stall. I see. So now the ball is getting smaller. Yep. And and lower. And, and I'm now I've passed my climb AOA. Right. And you're coordinated, and it's still in the center. Good approach, so. 220, Delta Kilo, right. 5,000. Yep, so I'm going to try and keep it on the Never red line. Zero, double kilo, north out of park, just and as you three, go zero, to three, higher and higher three, AOA, double I'm just going to keep moving the red line. I see, until it stalls. Until it stalls, and then we'll have our stall AOA. And, and, and park, your ball right three, zero, zero, three, 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 ball's still coordinated. Uh, okay. All right, so I guess we're getting a little bit of a curious ball, right? But not too much. So this gets actually more okay, sensitive Roger, than your ball at low speeds. I see. Which is actually one of its features rather than its bugs. So you're being part of our horn. Your yep, there's our horn. Roger, thank you. Roger, thank you. Roger, thank you. And that uh, is close enough to break. Good. Cool. Okay. So we're calibrated, okay, now we'll recover. Oh, cool. So now try uh, going to uh, Alpha uh, Y, like, or try a VX uh, right. climb. All right, thereabouts is VX. Oh, sure. I, uh, I screwed with the wrong setting. <laughs> okay, we'll have to do a stall calibration again, I'm sorry. That's fine. Okay. Two, 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 zero, one, All right, two, VX right, climb. Okay, so... All right, VX climb. Yep, that looks like VX climb. Yep. All right, let's do a stall then again. Nice. Now pretend you're going to land. November 7, 8, 2, 3, 9, squawk via park, change of your frequency approved into the weekend. All right, so if I'm coming in to land, I'm basically going to do carp out, which it is. Two, three, nine, nine. They're pulling out power slowly. Yep. I'm already within my flaps range, so I'll just go ahead and get dirty. Uh, next I'm at 55. Yep, a little bit of right rudder. We got... 20 degrees of flaps. Echo, echo Roger again, cleared ILS, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, that just tells you where you need to be. Four, five, so the next six, thing seven. to do is uh, Four, go to five, VA six, seven, seven with Yankee. and then do the steepest turn that you dare Okay. while maintaining your airspeed. Quebec 3, correct? Yeah. Roger. Pull those G's. Number 9 or 0, actually I stepped on. You just verify destination 0, Quebec 3. Okay, Second. big ball sagging low. And number 8, 3, 9 or 0, actually verify the through letter identifier destination. You see that? That's yeah, nice yeah, it's underneath my climb AOA. Yeah, but you're at Roger, speed. and the computer's not finding the system, sir. Do you have a, another airport that's closer to it? Maybe a major maintaining airport? maintaining altitude. Yep. Uh, in coordination, best I can. Yep, Better. that's pretty good. So we'll Roll in, pull those Gs. Yep, it's sagging even more. That's crazy. That's awesome. Go for Audio 235, Sierra Romeo. There you go. Uh, Hotel, uh, we are powerful, starting from and then we got, see if you uh, can do a flip to the other side without yeah, it stay coordinated, stay Use that rudder. Uh, at above, uh, and and go totally uh, uh, mode. Yeah, okay. Now remember, and roll, right pull four, those five, seven, six. Yep. Four, five, Good seven, job, six. excellent. So try and recover from a stall, but get into a second and yes, in that case, you about, will be pointing at the so ground, here, uh, and yet your angle of attack will be through the roof. Okay. Let's see, where's Byron Airport? I want to make sure I'm not flying over them. Oh, we are actually flying over near right. Tracy. Oh, that's Tracy? Yeah. Oh, okay. Number 870, Byron's over that direction. Oh, okay. Sweet. Oh, you're right. Look, there's the big four bay. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and... Uh, Turn around. Turn towards Livermore in like this direction. We, okay. we, won't, we won't be getting to their airspace doing yep. this. Rob is the dude now today who does not know how to recover from a stall. <laughs> and he doesn't <laughs> understand <laughs> this angle of attack. Right. And he thinks airplanes are just <laughs> like a car. He just drives them. Back and wherever you put the stick, that's where the airplane will go. Because that's how cars work, and he knows about cars. Of course. Today he's going to find out if he does that. Contact traps the bridge, 119.9. Help with air bomb. 19.9. Okay. Rob is about to stall. And...
and there you go, it breaks and now Rob pulls. Yeah, it secondary keeps stall. pulling, it's a secondary stall and even though the, the it's level, look where the angle of attack is. Oh yeah, way under that stall. Way under that stall, but the airplane is not working, it's nope. a car. Now we're going down at 500 feet a minute. I don't understand, my car would never behave that way. Right. I don't understand this angle of attack business. Interesting. What do you mean? Right, let's just lower the angle of attack. And the plane stops stalling. Ah, uh, feels much better. And so kinesthetically, Rob, who's just learning about airplanes and doesn't really understand this angle of attack business, thinks, oh, so that's where the air is coming from. That's just the pointer that my flight instructor showed me on the ground. Right. I can understand that. And the thing about this okay, instrument is different from a lot of other instruments is because we have a real air data probe. Right. We are getting, getting good angle of attack in all flight regions. We're not just giving you an angle of attack when you're near crew and when you're near stall. Right. right. Because right now, for example, your dynamic angle of attack tells you that you're just cruising. It just says you're in the green. Right, right, right. But this over here gives you an actual meaning of what your angle of attack is under all conditions. Sure. So since this gives you meaningful data in all phases of flight, you're more likely to actually trust this instrument. And Definitely. the more you trust an instrument, the more you use it. The more you use it, the more it's going to help you. Right, right. That's really nice. I like it. I think that's definitely a good... Uh Good use of the EAA's money for the Founders Innovation yeah, thing. Founders Innovation Prize is what it's called, right? It is, yes, indeed. Seven more towers, Cessna 733 Bravo Echo over the Altamont Pass, inbound for landing with Kilo. 733 Bravo Echo, Livermore more tower, shedding runway 25 left, report 3 miles. Straight in 25 left, uh, report 3 miles, 3 Bravo Echo. So one of the things that I find interesting is sometimes I think the angle of attack is actually lower than it is, uh, especially like in a descent right now, right. when the sound gets calm, I right. automatically assume that means my angle of attack is getting low. Right. Yeah. But we're actually in a sort of a like power low descent, and you know, we're nowhere near a stall. Right. So it's kind of reassuring just to know, oh, interesting, and just to have that kind of like in your mind. Okay, hold short, 25 right, with you. 3 Bravo, go change runway 25 right, clear to land. I'm just going to land with 20. Fair enough. B5, descent rate. Glide slope, aiming for the numbers. Runway's made, pull the power back slowly, slowly, slowly. Maintain center line. Now we'll just land long and hold it off. Now we'll demonstrate the AOA. Nice. I saw that it went below. Go to right, one able cover ground for six today. Over ground point six, good day. Is it really a bad reception out there? Where are you heading? Why in gravity pulling your in closer to me? Where you are? Uh, no, no, no. Where you at now? Where you at now? So I recorded more interview footage with the hob in uh, the in and out that you guys saw the segue into and unfortunately the audio didn't turn out the restaurant was just too loud and all of the background noise was just kind of overpowering the interview and for some reason this time i didn't have him put the lavalier on so the sound just wasn't usable really i'd like to extend a huge thank you to ehab for coming out to livermore airport from the south bay area it's about a 45 to 90 minute drive depending on traffic and uh, i hope he was able to get home <laughs> after we were done flying because he was leaving just basically when rush hour starts 
It was a weekend, so it might not have been as bad as it usually is. Now, like we said in the vlog, Ihab has submitted this to the EAA Founders Innovation Prize Committee, and he and his collaborator, Jeremy, are planning on going to uh, Oshkosh 2018. Hopefully, I can join them there as well. If they're in the top five finalists, they get to demonstrate the airball probe to a panel of judges, and then if they get uh, the grand prize, they get a grant. So as news comes out about the airball probe regarding availability, whether they win the grand prize or any of the other prizes, all of that information is going to be in future vlogs. So if you like like this content, if you're interested in the airball probe, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel. I know this video is a long one. I really do hope you made it to the end. If you did enjoy this style of content, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you want to be notified when I post new videos, uh, go ahead and toggle that little bell that's next to the subscribe button. I'm also running a Patreon campaign and the full-length videos of the interviews, the flight demonstration, and everything else uh, will be available there for patrons. If you're interested, go ahead and check out the Patreon campaign. It's linked in the description below. And there's my cat in the background. Hello, kitty. Always. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me to the end. Fly safe, and we'll see you in the next one.